observability. Observability is a buzzword in our industry from some time, but most of us are still not clear about what it is and why it's so important. So in this video, let's try to understand what is observability. How is it different from monitoring? Why is it so important now in every application or organizations? What are the pillars of observability? And at last, what is open telemetry? If you are new to this channel, then I am a software developer with over nine years of experience in the industry working with various organizations. In this channel, I'll be creating videos on the topic which would be important for every developer to have at least a basic understanding to keep pace with this fast growing industry. If you like my videos and want to see more such videos, then please subscribe to my channel and keep watching. So let's continue with our video. So what is observability? Observability is defined as the ability to determine the internal state of a system by its external outputs. Or let's put it the other way around. If from the data generated by a system, we are able to interpret the state of the system's component or internal state, then that system is called as observable system. This system generated data can be anything, maybe some metrics, logs or traces. Now let's try to understand how monitoring is different from observability. In few words, if I need to differentiate between monitoring and observability, then I would say monitoring deals with knowns, whereas observability deals with unknowns. Let me try to elaborate this with an example. Let's assume that we have a system and its throughput would be impacted if the CPU usage goes beyond 95%. In this case, we usually create a dashboard and monitor the CPU usage. Likewise, we might monitor a few more things which we know can impact the system's performance or stability. We even set alerts on certain threshold values so that on reaching those values, we would be alerted and we can quickly take preventive actions to safeguard our application. So this is called as monitoring, where we know the fact that spikes or changes in few values from the system will impact the performance or health of our application. Now let's go a little further. Let's assume that our service is down, but our existing metrics such as the CPU usage or memory usage didn't reach any threshold in the recent history. So it means something else has caused the issue. Then we might start checking different data such as logs, throughput or customer actions, etc. We may check the existing metrics also for some unusual spikes or changes. And with this all available data collectively, if we are able to find out the root cause of our issue, then our system is an observable system. In this case also, we use the existing dashboard created for monitoring, but that alone can't help us to identify the issue. We would use other data as well, which means when we don't know or we can't predict the reason for a weird behavior in our system, but we are able to identify the root cause with the existing data, then that system is an observable system. Now let's discuss why do we need observability? The modern day systems are fast transforming into complex open source cloud native microservice which generally runs on a Kubernetes cluster. And they get deployed at a lightning speed where the old technologies such as API monitoring where sampling is done once a minute can't keep the pace with the faster deployments. When working on these complex distributed system, identifying a broken link in the chain can be nearly impossible. In simple words, applications are complex, hence it is getting complicated to track them. And to address this, observability is used which is best suited for such distributed microservice application. Processing a good observability facilitate faster resolution for problems by helping teams identify the cause of the issue and teams would spend less time troubleshooting and more time building. Now let me explain about the pillars of observability. Generally observability is said to have three pillars, which are logs, metrics, and traces. Let's start with logs. In simple words, Log is a written record of happenings within a system. They are generally timestamped and can be in any binary or, or plain text forms. There is something called structured log also, which is a mix of text and metadata. And generally that is getting popular nowadays because it is very easy to query. Logs are typically the source of truth for what the application is doing. It's where you look when something goes wrong in a system and developer rely on them to troubleshoot their code and verify its execution. A failure in a distributed system usually has a series of underlying causes and logging provides us with fine grained details where certain code blocks get executed. Now let's talk about metrics. 
a metric is a numerical value like percentile or averages measured over an interval of time and includes specific attributes such as timestamp name kpi and value etc that can track anything about your environment over time from latency to error rates or to user signups metrics provides an overall picture of your system you can use them to assess the health of your environment at a glance maybe visualize how quickly your users are loading your website or average memory consumption of your servers etc now the third pillar is traces distributed tracing is a capability for a tracing solution to track and observe service requests as they flow through the distributed system by collecting data as requests goes from one service to another The trace data helps you understand the flow of the request through your microservice environment and pinpoint where the failures or performance issues are occurring in the system. It's a diagnostic technique that reveals how a set of services coordinate to handle individual user requests. Observability cannot be discussed without talking about open telemetry. Performance and health of an application is usually the first priority for most of the organization. and the information we use to determine whether an application is healthy and performing as designed is called telemetry data managing the performance in today's complex distributed environment is extremely difficult telemetry data is critical for helping devops and it groups understand their systems behavior and performance to gain a complete picture of their services and applications behavior they need to instrument all their frameworks and libraries across programming languages There are many agents out there which can be used to collect the telemetry data but sometimes using these agents can tie us to those providers however no commercial vendor has a single instrument or tool to collect data from all of an organization's application this lack results in data silos and other ambiguities that make troubleshooting and performance issue resolution more difficult that is when open telemetry comes into picture Open telemetry creates both a single open standard for telemetry data and the technology to collect and export data from cloud native application so it can be monitored and analyzed. Open telemetry is important because it standardizes the way telemetry data is collected and transmitted to the backend platforms. It bridges the visibility gap by providing a common format of instrumentation across all services. If you want to learn more on logging metrics and traces Please watch out my next videos where I am explaining how to use each one of them and their proper implementation and how they contribute towards observability of the system. So that's all about part 1 of the series. See you in the next one. Thank you.